Christian to the Lord, then you must not be part of the world and you must not do those things that the people of the world are doing. In Romans chapter 12, I'm reading verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. The Lord is telling us that we must not be conformed to the people of the world or to the pattern of the world or to the appearance of the world. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world in their festivities, be not conformed to this world. In their appearance, be not conformed to this world. In their marriage and in their burial, in everything they do, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What leanness manifests itself in many ways and in many areas. And one of the areas is that I've been reading to you in worldly dressing and worldly appearance and worldly adornment. God's only purpose of clothing and dressing is to cover our nakedness. And you cover your nakedness appropriately. There are things that are not appropriate for women. There are things that are not appropriate for men. You cover your nakedness appropriately. There are things that are not appropriate for your teenage daughters. There are things that are not appropriate for your uh, teenage boys. You cover your nakedness, number one, appropriately. Number two, modestly. There should be modesty. But you know these people that have lost all sobriety and shame and modesty. And the way they appear, even some married women, and even their husbands will allow them to pose before a photographer. And then they will show that picture to the world. Modesty has been thrown up into the air. It says you must close yourself in modesty. Modestly you, you close yourself. Number three, neatly. You will be neat. You know, being like you are, uh, you are coming from the bush. Or that you have, you have been, you know, doing some work that you have not taken your bath for one whole week. And the whole place is stinking. You will be neat. And then, number four, moderately. You will not spend all your income on, on dressing. And then, completely, you cover your nakedness so that the tempting part of your body will not be seen outside. You don't want to lure anybody into evil the way you dress. And then, number six, you dress decently. And then, number seven, economically. Economically, transparent dresses, perforated dresses, attention seeking dresses are worldly. They are not for the children of God. We are not to be conformed to the world in dressing or in anything else. Worldly music will not be for you. Worldly entertainment will not be for you. Worldly festivities will not be for you. The worldly cares and the worldly societies, they are destructive to the Christian life, and therefore we will not have them in our lives in Jesus' name. In Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4, I'm reading to you from verse 18. See what worldly care does. See what worldly care actually produces in our lives. Mark chapter 4, verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as Hear the word and the cares of this life. The cares of this life. The cares of this life. And the deceitfulness of riches. And the loss of other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. You see, if all these things are permitted in our lives, they'll choke the word of God in our lives. Hearing, if all these cares of the world and the appearance of the world, and the thinking of the world, and the direction of the world, if we permit them in our lives, in our families, in our church, it will choke the world. Look at verse 19 again. And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the loss of all other things, entering in. If they were not there before, just entering in, they choke the world, and it becomes unfruitful. And these are they, which are sown on good ground, such as Hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Some thirty fold, some sixty fold, and some an hundred fold. What you are hearing this morning, will it bring any fruit in your life? How many fold will it bring? 
Will you accept the word of God and live by the word of God? And your wife live by the word of God? And your husband live by the word of God? And your children living by the word of God? The Lord will bless you. Let's come to point number three. Controlled by the Lord to propagate His glory. Controlled by the Lord to propagate His glory. You see, when you become a child of God, you belong to the Lord. And because you belong to the Lord, what now remains is that you live your life to the glory of the Lord and the Lord alone. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 19 and Verse 20. Here he tells us, What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. That is, your body belongs to the Lord now. You will not act like the people that say, well, I don't want to carry my religion too far. I don't want to do anything about the body. I'll just dress the way I used to dress before. I'll just uh, drink what I used to drink before. After all, salvation righteousness is only in the heart. That's not the Bible. The Bible says that you are bought with a price. Therefore, you glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Because they belong to God. In Psalm 4, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 4, reading from verse 3. If you are a child of God, you are set apart for the honor and the glory of the Lord. It tells us, Psalm 4, verse 3. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him, stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your own bed and be still. Don't be agitated. Don't fight against the word of God. Don't rebel against the word of God. Be still. Verse 5. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. To be righteous, it demands sacrifice. You cannot go your own way and please yourself and say whatever you want to say and dress the way you want to dress and still be righteous. Sacrifices of righteousness. If you are going to be righteous, it demands some sacrifice. Isaiah chapter 43, I'm reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 43, reading from verse 7. It tells us, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. You are not for the glory of your tribe anymore. You are not for the glory of, uh, you know, your village people anymore. And you are not for your own glory anymore. You know, some people say, I know I'm beautiful. I know I'm handsome. And because of that, I want to show to the people how handsome I am. But you are not to show your own glory. And you are not to show your own honor. And you are not to demonstrate or uh, you are not to, you know, show your beauty to the people of the world. What does it say? Everyone that is called by my name, I have created him for my glory. For I, I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Look at verse 21. These people have I formed for myself. He has not made you for yourself. He has not redeemed you for yourself. He says, these people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. He tells us in Romans chapter 14, verse 8. Romans chapter 14, we're reading from verse 8. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live and therefore or die, we are the Lord's. We belong to the Lord. And it's only the beauty of holiness that will be important to us now. We're reading from Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15 from verse 5. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded. That is, for there to be no difference between you and I. That what I preach over here, you receive over there. And we accept the word together. The Lord grants you that you be like-minded one to another according to Christ Jesus. Then he says that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God. 
that says there's no difference what the pastor is preaching, the people are receiving. And then with one mind and with one mouth, we're glorifying God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is telling us then we have something to do. And we have the Lord to honor. And we have our souls and spirits to protect from the things of the world. We will not allow the world to infiltrate into our hearts. Or to infiltrate into our family. Or to infiltrate into our church. This church will be kept away from the world in Jesus' name. In Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 again. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. The latest passion, is that from above? The jewelry and the gold, is that from above? The cosmetics and the painting, is that from above? Why are you setting your attention on that? If ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead. We are dead to all those things. Are we attracted by them again? Are we interested in them again? We are dead to them. For ye are dead, and your life is seed with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Thank God the Lord has done it in our hearts. Now we are waiting for the coming of the Lord. And when he will come, the world will not pull us down. Worldliness will not get us away from the Lord. We'll remain with the Lord until He comes. In, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. We're living in an evil world. In a world of darkness. In a world of sin. In a world of pollution. But we are here to be different. And we're to shine forth the light of the glorious gospel. And the life we live shall show what we have been learning from the word of God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. And glorify your father which is in heaven. When people see you. When people relate with you, will they be glorifying the world or glorifying God? Will they be glorifying you or honoring the Lord? I want people to honor the Lord when they see me. And you want the, Lord, the people to honor the Lord when they see you. If that's your goal, then let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works, your different life, your gracious life, your holy life, your heaven-mindedness. And then they will glorify our Father who is in heaven. We're going to spend some time in prayer. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord today. And say, Lord, I have heard and I'm going to obey. Lord, you have taught me today and I accept everything that you have taught me. Number one, called out of the world. Number two, cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Number three, controlled by the Spirit of God. You tell the Lord, look back at home, look back home in your wardrobe. Look back home in your family. Look back home, dear sister, dear brother, and young people. Look back home. Are you acting like the world? Are you behaving like the world? Or are you yielding yourself to the Lord? Commit yourself to the Lord. You have things to repent of, repent. You have things to set right, rectify in your life, rectify them, set them right. You have things to restore, make your restitution. You have heard the word of God today. Be heavenly minded. Don't allow the pressure of the world or the persecution of the world or the practice of the world to crush you and bury you in the dirty water of the world. The world is like a well with dirty water. And the Lord Jesus died for us. He shed his blood for us so that he can rescue us and deliver us and pull us out of the present evil world. Come out from that evil in the world and say, Lord, here am I. I give myself unto you.
Do you remember your character when you first came to know the Lord? Your dressing when you first came to know the Lord? Your comportment when you first came to know the Lord? Why have you changed? The word of God has not changed. Were well, you trying to please the world now instead of pleasing God? The word of God has not changed. The standard has not changed. If anybody changed, he has been influenced by the world. The perforated dresses you will not wear before, why are you wearing them today? And the transparent dresses you will not wear before, why are you wearing them today? And the sleeves you will not allow before, why are you allowing them today? Why don't you return to Bethel and return to the place you knew the Lord and your commitment of those days and your yieldedness of those days and your submission of those days and your obedience of those days, you bring the obedience back. The grace of God is still available. The grace of God is still available. The grace of God is still available. And that grace is able to make us what we ought to be. We should never feel we are above the teaching of the word of God. We should never feel that now we become so high, so knowledgeable, and we become so rich and so wealthy that now the word of God does not make any sense, any meaning in our lives anymore. You are in the marriage committee. What you will not allow. If the other sisters that are coming in the marriage committee, they want to get married, you allow for your daughter when your daughter is going to get married. What you will not allow in the men, the young men who are coming to the marriage committee, you are in the marriage committee yourself. Do you allow it on your son when your son is going to get married? Isn't that double standard? Is that of God? Keep the standard for the members of the church and for members of your own family. Keep the standard, the word of God. Teach your children, teach your daughters, Teach your sons, teach your wife, and plead with your husband that we follow the standard together. Whosoever will be a friend of the world will be the enemy of God. Whosoever, whosoever. Even Solomon, whosoever, or Samson, whosoever, no matter how high, how popular, how rich, how exalted, how high, whosoever will be a friend of the world, will be an enemy of God. Come out of the world. Examine yourself. The associations you belong to today. Examine yourself. The ambition you entertain in your mind. Examine yourself. The agitations you have gotten into. You are going to get anything from your place of work? Agitation. You are going to get anything from your husband? Agitation. You are going to get anything from your wife? Agitation. You are going to get anything from your parents? Agitation. You are going to get anything from the church? Agitation. Rebellious attitude. Unruly attitude, aggressive attitude, anything you want to have, agitation, repent of it, it's not of God. It used to be that only children will practice agitation. Now politicians practice agitation. Rich people now practice agitation. Religious people now practice agitation. It used to be that there's a mixed multitude that are not really sure of their new experience, one leg inside, one leg outside. It used to be that they were the only people that will murmur and get agitated. But now the leaders like Korah, and Abiram, they also get into agitation. Repent of it. Repent of it. Agitation is not of God. Routing is not of God. Breaking down the system is not of God. And disobedience is not of God. Repent of the agitation and say, Lord, I surrender myself to you. Can't you pray for five minutes? 
Can't you yield yourself to the Lord? Can't you take all those points in the message and say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. Cleanse me with the blood of the Lamb. Cleanse me with the blood of the Lamb. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you tonight. Cleanse you today. Cleanse you at this time. Cleanse you from all sin. All those abominations of the world. All those abominations of the world. Women put in all what belongs to men. Men put in all what belongs to women. All those abominations and the occultism and the necromancy. And everything that's an abomination to the Lord, let the Lord cleanse you. He can do it. He can do it. He'll cleanse you with the washing of water by the word and with the blood of Jesus Christ. 